Okay, what's going on guys? Crazy here. Welcome back to No Man's Sky Companions Update. In today's video, let's talk all about the new creatures as well as gene editing because and this is something that you're definitely going to want to do if you want to come up with really unique, cool and interesting kind of companions and even more so if you want to maximize their stats, change their behaviors and kind of make them as useful or playful or aggressive as you want them to be. There's quite a bit in the new update, quite a ton of mechanics that we will explain right here. So without further ado, if you enjoyed this video at any point, don't forget to leave a thumbs up on it and let's jump right into it. Now first things first, once you log in the game for the very first time in update 1.2, you will notice that you now have another quick menu right here at the bottom called the Companions Registry, which pretty much has to deal and shows you the interface with all of your available animal companions. Now by default you have only two of these unlocked, up to six of them maximum, but do keep in mind that these exponentially increase in nanite cost. So while the first one only costs about 500 nanites to unlock, the other ones quickly double up in value every single time. So by the fifth one it's going to cost about 5000 nanites to unlock and then the sixth one is going to be 10,000. Just be careful with that, it's going to be quite expensive to unlock all of these, but it is definitely going to be worth it. From this point on, it's where it all becomes a bit more streamlined, because now you don't have to worry about complicated creature recipes. The only thing you now have to create is one creature palette, which costs about 50 carbon to create. And with this you can tame pretty much any creature, be it an aggressive one, a carnivore, a docile one, like a herbivore, it doesn't really matter, you can just to walk up to it and press the adoption option which is going to immediately make that creature your companion from the very beginning. Point at which the interesting stuff kind of starts to happen. The first one is going to be your relationship with that creature which is indicated by the two um, meters right here in the right side of the screen. One of them is of course um, its friendship level and the other one is going to be its um, hunger level. So you're going to more often than not want to keep these as uh, close to maximum as possible because in turn this will increase your standing or in this case the creatures trust in you so as you can see right here by default this creature came with a 65% trust in the beginning which is pretty high but about like 30 minutes later and a bit of feeding and interacting with said creature it was already to 75 now by default what this does is that it helps you a little bit with how much this creature is going to help you in your journey of course, the three stats at the bottom that we will talk about in just a little bit are a little bit more important than that, but this um, can also be quite helpful in itself. From this point on, we're gonna take a look at the stats, the three ones over there at the bottom, because these are extremely important and these will completely dictate how your creature will behave, especially when you're going outside on planets with them. This is why in this case I recommend that if you find a cool looking creature, don't just settle for the very first model you find, but instead try to tame at least a handful of these, see what their stats look like and then decide on the best possible model. So just to give you an example, here are two specimens of the same species. The first one right here has an 81% stat into helpfulness, which means that more often than not it is going to try to help me in one way or another, maybe resource collecting, maybe attacking another creature, maybe unlocking a secret, it is going to be more helpful than not, which is quite different, quite a stark difference compared to the second model right here, which only has about 29% and even that is in playfulness, so that means it's not going to do too much in helping me, of course assuming that that is a trait that you're looking into when you're trying to adopt one of these creatures, but this could be quite a desirable trait if for example when you're mining and you don't want to see your creature just dancing in the background and kind of just playing and not doing anything and like completely different from another one that actively seeks out to help you mine resources for you and then even bring them as a form of offering which can definitely be quite a game changer or well not really game changer but it can be quite helpful to you um, if you seek
seek the proper behaviors. Now, this um, also kind of changes a little bit depending on what types of accessories you apply to your creature. And yes, absolutely, if you want your creature to, for example, mine the terrain, you will need to install something like these mining lasers, like how I did on this really cool dinosaur creature right here. And I will argue that it also looks really awesome, like having a T-Rex or what looks to be like a T-Rex with two freaking cannons on the side is a sight to behold. Now I'm not entirely certain what the others do yet because there's still quite a bit of testing to be involved but generally speaking it seems that only these ones have uh, a bigger impact since they're the only ones that can shoot lasers while the other ones they can do quite a bit of scanning. They might help a little bit with the amount of resources that they can collect like for example if you install something like canisters or uh, just something that um, expands the creature's inventory it might or might not um, be able to bring you more resources than it would otherwise. Now this brings us to the next bit of the guide and the one that is more important because this is gonna be all about the offsprings, gene editing and of course the stats that you have more control over in um, these offsprings as I was saying. So uh, pretty much every creature can spawn an egg about 24 hours after you initially tamed it. So right after you tamed it, it's when a timer will start to count down from 24 hours downwards on that fifth spot right there. By the way, quick edit, you can easily skip that 24 hour timer, especially if you're playing on the Steam version of the game. So simply go offline, change the time of date to one day ahead, then go and play Steam offline and once you log in the game, yeah, you're gonna be able to skip that timer entirely. I will post a quick edit in the description box for you how to do this, especially on the Steam version. Now there are a few conditions that must be met before you can um, cause that creature to lay an egg. The first one is of course to just be fully fed, so just feed it a couple of pallets and it should have that meter to 100%. The second one, as you will see in just a little bit, is the fact that that creature has to be in its native climate for it to be even able to lay an egg. Like for example, this one right here was acquired from a radioactive planet, which means that if I were to make it lay an egg on this one, a lush planet, it's not going to be able to do so. So in order to verify Verify that simply head over to your uh, registry of companions and just check that native climate right there the third spot and it is going to show you what you need to search in terms of biomes in order to make this creature lay its egg so that is exactly what I did in this case I went to a radioactive planet again it doesn't have to be the same planet it just has to be any planet with the same um, biome and you're gonna be able to make it induce that egg now from this point on you will receive an actual egg and um, it has about 24 more hours after it was spawned from which you can hatch it. Now you can either wait for that timer or splice it in the meantime and Gene edit it in the space anomaly but we will discuss these in two separate sections. What you need to know about eggs in the meantime is the fact that there's a finite number of eggs that any single creature can lay in its lifespan. So for example in the case of these creatures you can see that they have already reached their limit. Um, in this case it can vary quite a little bit so for the time being the maximum number of eggs that I've seen a single creature laying was two in this case so out of the four creatures that I got two of them were able to lay up to two eggs and two of them were able to only lay one single egg before reaching the cap not really sure if you can pass that limit but I'm pretty sure that it's not gonna be too much over that now in terms of creating offsprings here is what happens if you just hatch the egg the regular old way without doing any gene editing and well the first observation is the fact that the offspring is not going to look that much different than its parent. It can definitely change colors but usually it's not. You're going to want to do gene editing if you want to be 100% sure that that will happen. Now in terms of the stats and everything else this is determined at the time of the hatching which means that yes you can absolutely use saves coming in order to change the results and just do a save file before doing the hatching and you can change the result every single time but again it's more often than not going to look pretty similar to the parent now in this case since we don't have any controls over the stats they were quite random and even ended up being lower than the parent especially in terms of height and weight now in terms of its behavior this is going to be completely inherited from the parent so if the parent has playfulness aggressiveness and independence the offspring will have them as well but with a deviation of 15 to 20 percent among 
among all three of these stats at the same time. So what this means is that the offspring will have a random distribution of these stats between 15 to 20 percent among all of them at the same time. I will note that the color can indeed change from one offspring to another. So for example in this case I got an albino version of the same bird when previously its parent was colored. So yes that can absolutely happen and again if you use saves coming you can have a bit more control over this but again not as close to the gene editing. Which brings us to the final egg sequencer, the new machine that was added on the space anomaly between the place where you added your character and of course the chef right here on the other side. But the thing about this is that this absolutely works on eggs even as they are about to hatch. As a matter of fact it's probably desirable to do it this way as you can immediately see the results in front of you. Now in terms of what you can edit you have four categories that you can edit with the sequencer. The first one is going to be its size, so height and weight. The second one is going to be anatomy and features. You can either gain or lose features with this one. The third one is going to be about its colors and finally the personality traits. Now going over the growth from my discoveries, sodium and phosphorus seem to be some of the best in terms of guarantee increasing the height and the weight of the offspring compared to its default parent. So the dosage right here, if you look at it, it's 100%, which means that there's a 100% guaranteed chance for this to actually increase. Not that it's going to increase by 100%. And the same goes with phosphorus. I also discovered that silver um, is another one that works 100% but the dosages can be much lower by the way so this also means that um, it's going to have a much lower chance for that to happen. So if you put something like, I'm not sure, maybe um, a different kind of solution right here, it's not going to have a dosage of 100% anymore. It can also decrease, by the way, as you just saw. So you have both of these options. But in my case, I prefer it to always increase. So I will go with the sodium. Now in gene splitting and something that I also want to make you pay attention to, um, you can overdose on 150%. In fact, both the gene and the dye injector can be overdosed up to 150% with the proper materials. It's just that I have yet to find one um, that actually works for the neural injector and the growth hormone. So if you do have any of these, please let me know down below. Uh, we also haven't found a single one that has a predictable result. As you can see, in both of these situations, the results are unstable. So what this means is that they are completely random. So we shall check if gold has any effect on that. And the final one that I've discovered is the neural calibrator. For example, cobalt almost always has a 100% chance to go into helpfulness. So this means the creature is going to be more helpful when going and exploring or when fighting. Um, there's others in there too, like for example, if you put in a walker brain, yeah, this one is going to instead add to its independence. So at the very least, there is a reason why you're going to use each and every single one of these. It's just that for the dyes and the genes, we cannot find anything so far. So in this case, the dosage is 100%, which means that 100% of that stat distribution is now only going into independence and not the two other um, behavior stats that the creature has. So let's go ahead, begin the process. We're gonna edit the genes right away and it's gonna take like just a few seconds and now you get the modified egg right here so you can see that the height, weight and independence are increased we know that but anatomy and coloring is unstable so let's see how that actually looks in practice. By the way, um, you can easily spot if an egg has been edited because now it has a note next to its description while um, the normal one does not have something like that. So you can do it right on the space anomaly. This is the end result. As you can see, this is the baby that we just got. So let's compare that with its parent. Here is the offspring, here is the parent. As we do know that its anatomy was uh, pretty much um, not a 100% guarantee thingy, it kind of went random, so now its horn on the head was lost and instead it has one on the back. Also lost its crystals on its side and uh, its head also looks a little bit different. Now it has a different coloring right here compared to the rest of its body. Again, we did add growth hormone to it, so now its height and weight are quite significantly higher than its parent from 1.8 meters in height and 70 kilos to 90 kilos and 2.3 meters. 
so we can do this every single generation until it increases to crazy sizes and um, by the way we were talking about the stats so as you can see only independence changed from 40 percent to 60 percent but the other two were left intact 78 19 because as i've said the entire stat distribution was only into this up to 20 percent as i said in the beginning of the video so you can build upon this from one generation to another and then create the perfect specimen like three or four generations later down the line and come up with something absolutely incredible but you have to wait for it to grow into a full-on adult this is it though with uh, the new update and some of the biggest tips i had in terms of getting the proper creature let me know down below of your findings and if you found anything interesting that i have missed or skipped upon and i'm gonna see you guys in the next one